Jill Conrath is a force of nature. In her 50s, she became an internationally recognized sales expert, training all over the world. And now, in her 70s, she is launching a new venture called What's Really Possible. Listen in as we dive into her journey and how she's really done it. Hello, dreamers. Welcome to the Late Starters Club, giving you the inspiration, mindset, and tools you need to start something midlife and beyond. Remember, it's never too late to follow your dreams. Hello, everyone. It's your host, Andrea Vall, and I am here with the fantastic Jill Conrad. We met many, many, many years ago when she was doing her, her previous uh iteration of all the changes and pivoted pivots that she's made throughout her year, but our years. And, um, but I want to just talk to her today about her new launch of what's really possible.com. She's doing this to engage people in creating a better future. But prior to that, she was an internationally recognized sales expert, author, and speaker. And that's where I met her originally. We spoke at the same conference. And so I'm super excited to dive into all of your changes and what's really possible. <laughs> Jill, welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. I'm glad to talk about it because there's so much more possible. There's so much more possible than what we're facing today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that is, that's, uh, I, you know, I just felt such an alignment when I saw what you were doing. And I was like, that's exactly what the Lead Starters podcast is about. And you are launching this. You know, in you know, and you even launched your sales career later, a little bit later in life, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why don't you give us a little bit about your background? And you know, we were talking a little bit about all the different changes you've had throughout the years. Tell us a kind of the uh, the the leading up to what's really possible right <laughs> now, and 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 okay. how you've made some of these changes. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me just start out with the typical thing, a person my age. Um, and, and by the way, I'm 71 right now, will soon be 72. So I am really starting over on the next phase of my life. Um, but growing up my age, women became teachers. And so I was a high school teacher uh, for about four and a half years and I hated it. I mean, if you had to ask me a job that was like worse for, for me, just for me, yeah. It was that. And I, so I tried to get it other, another job back then, but people wanted to hire me as a bank teller or something like that. And it was like, no, I, there's more here than a bank teller, you know, yeah. but um, ultimately they wouldn't hire me because I was a high school teacher and I didn't have any other qualifications. So I started to, um, I started to work with a couple other people to come up with an idea for a company. We found a really good one, went to the service corps of retired executives and they said, this is good. It's timely. We see you three as being able to pull it off. And then he looked at the three of us and he said, now, which one of you three is going to be doing the sales? And I leaned forward with a nasty look on my face. And I said, I thought you said it was a good idea. And he said, it is Jill, but somebody has to sell it. And it was like, it made me sick. I hated sales. Uh -huh. um, so I essentially said, okay, I'll do it. Went into sales, discovered it was totally different from what I thought it was, that it was really about helping serve your client and, and helping them achieve their objectives. Did really, really wonderful. Never went back to my other idea. Um, ultimately moved from my first company, Xerox, to selling computers and found it wonderful. Then had two, had two babies and so had to do a, some adjustment and uh, working, you know, crazy, busy, you know, like all the time. So took some time off, like a year off, and I came back. I started my own consulting business, um, working primarily with companies um, on their sales issues. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a number of years. And then um, oh, I had a really good business. It was a lot of good clients. And up until now, we're talking about the year 2000. And what happened in 2000 was that um, there was some recession that was going on. And both of my big clients who had booked me out for five months straight I had no spare time. I had the whole future booked out. Mm -hmm. Both of them came under pressure from Wall Street at the exact same time and cut me off. It's just like, sorry, oh Jill, you're an outsider. We cut our outsiders first. And so I had all this blank time in front of me. And then I tried to get some work. I hung in there for a while and they never came back. And then I, I tried to get some work and nobody answered the phone and all the mm -hmm. calls 
voicemail and I emailed yeah. people and nobody emailed me back. And I thought, oh, yeah. God, Bill, I remember I'm about 50 years old right now at yeah. that point. And I'm thinking, you're over the hill. You're over the hill. You haven't been out there selling it for these last 15 years because you've been doing consulting. No wonder nobody wants to, hand, you know, to do anything with you. And I, and I just, I mean, I walked through the valley of death, you know, for myself because I just had lost everything. Yeah. And then one day I realized I was out talking to people. I was networking at that time. And um, I finally let my guard down a little bit. And when I say let my guard down, people say, you know, usually say, how is business? And I go, fine. And I had this nice chipper look on my face. And I finally uh -huh. said, you know, I'm really struggling. You know, nobody's answering the phone, blah, blah, blah. That whole thing again. And everybody said, oh, I'm having the same problem too. I'm yeah. having the same problem too. And it was like, it was such, so, such a wake up call for me that it wasn't me who was over the hill. It right. was a problem that other people were facing. Hmm. And knowing that allowed me to detach from the scary feeling that I was having inside of me, like I had no future. <laughs> right. Allowed me to detach and go, oh my God, it's not me. This is a problem that everyone is facing. It's a challenge. And I'm going to dig in to see if I can figure out what it takes. Uh -huh. And so I spent a lot of time researching and experimenting and experimenting and ultimately figure out how to get my own business back. And then I had to pull myself back from that and say, now that I've got this system for me, how can I de-jill it, you know, so that it works for other people? And I did that and then wrote a book and my whole business changed and, and wrote another book. I thought one book was all I had in me. And now five books later, um, four wow. sales and one another topic. Yeah. Um, you know, that's what happened from there. And that all started at the age of 50. And now yeah. I have completed that cycle of my life. And I know it's complete because I lost interest. <laughs> it's like, okay, now what? And so what I'm doing today is something that's been on my mind for a number of years. And I was always afraid to go ahead with it or trying to finish up my, you know, the sales stuff. But mm -hmm. then I went through some personal challenges with the loss of my husband, mother, and father within a short period of time and had to, it's like, there's no there there. And, and I finally was getting my mojo back right. and I do live in the Minneapolis area. And then, you know, COVID and then we had George Floyd, you know, the murder of George Floyd in our backyard. And it was like, ah, and I spun and spun and spun. And finally, finally, I figured out what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and this will be for the next 20 or 30 years. <laughs> You've got a minimum of 10, you know. <laughs> well, I figure, you know, when I'm 82, I might want to try something new. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. So great. So that's amazing. And I love that you like didn't even realize you were going to be writing books when you were in your 50s and that you wrote like five. It's just and and you were, you know, you spoke all over the place that your spoke over the world started in, in your 50s. I remember when I was first starting to write my book, my mm -hmm. first book, Selling to Big Companies. I remember thinking, um, I, if I'm going to write this book, I want it to sell because it's very, it'll be helpful to people if it sells. So then I did research on what did, do I need to do in order to sell the book? And I wanted to get a publisher and then I wanted people to buy it. And I remember reading a book um, and it said you needed to be a speaker. And it was like, oh, shit um <laughs> i hate speaking i hate it. i know that's just what's funny. It's so I know. funny so then i joined national speakers association and learned how to be a speaker yeah and you know and all this was happening oh it's just too much it's just too much but i kept going and every time i'd find out something more i mean there were so many oh my god moments i can't believe i'm doing this and Another big one at that point was I was so upset because I'm, I'm just this 
small consultant in White Bear Lake, Minnesota, which is the uh-huh. suburb of St. Paul. That's what I was thinking at that time. And I, and I was so tired of, of all the, the people who were out there in my field who were successful and this, the voice of sales, and they were all bald white men. And I kept thinking, why don't the women step forward? Why don't the women step forward? Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, there's, well, there's a few other women that have written books and I hadn't written it yet, but I was kind of doing that. And, and one day I woke up and went, oh my God, it seems to me that I am the only one who is bothered by <laughs> no women out there and women mm-hmm. absolutely need a role model. So I went, oh shoot, looks like it's my job to be yeah. visible out there. And yeah. so then I had to learn all these new skills about being visible mm-hmm. and, and doing what I have done since then and writing a, you know, writing a newsletter since 20, I think my first newsletter was 2001 mm-hmm. and it's evolved over time <laughs> it's yeah. in the field right now. But I mean, I was up to 145,000 subscribers on my newsletter wow. and, you know, and I just kept writing and writing and became a highly visible woman in sales, a role model yeah. for people. So that's awesome. That's so great. And I love that, you know, you became that role model, not only as a woman, but a woman in her fifties who, you know, at, like you said, like so many, you know, it's just a very, uh, it can be very challenging time thinking with lots of people thinking I'm over the hill and yeah. you were the yeah. example saying, no, we can, Get yeah, but I, but I felt like I was over the hill. Mm-hmm. And then it's like I had to claw my way back and, <laughs> and a whole new thing started, you know? Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about like how, like how did this what's really possible come about in terms of like, you know, the mission and what your vision is for this? Like what, what are you planning for this, uh, for this cycle and this, this, yeah. you know, product or whatever, you know, <laughs> new thing. <laughs> I prefer to think of myself as an evolutionary person and I don't have <laughs> the end goal. I mean, the end, I don't have everything in place. Okay. This is right. not something that I know where exactly it's going. Mm-hmm. I mean, I am in the process of discovering where it's going to lead me, which yeah. I, yeah, I could never have imagined what would have happened with, you know, the sales consultant who lost all her business either. So right. I'm okay with, just starting. Mm -hmm. Um, the genesis of it, I think is, is interesting because it happened probably 15 years ago, maybe more. Um, I was at, there were a couple incidents. I was at a football game with my husband. We were playing in a different part of the country. We, when I say we, not my husband and I, my son was playing in another part of the country. And, and we, my husband and I at the time, um, went down to visit you know, watch the game and we're standing at a bar outside after the game. And, and a young man comes up to us and, you know, said, where, where are you from? And I said, well, we're from, you know, Minnesota. Oh, he says, red state or blue state? First question. It's like, whoa, <laughs> nobody's ever asked me that before. Yeah. So well, Minnesota is an interesting state because yeah. half of our, our representatives are Democrat. Half of them are Republican. Uh, we have two senators who are both Democrats, but our governor is uh, Republican, and our previous governor was Jesse Ventura, the pro mm-hmm. wrestler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, and then the young man. Oh, oh. Uh, so, what news channels do you listen to? That's the next question. Wow, I know. And I said, well, I really try to, you know, see multiple news channels. Like I'll watch CNN, Fox, mm-hmm. MSNBC, NBC. Mm-hmm. You know, I try to get my news from a lot of sources to see. Yeah what's really going on because they, some of them have their own point of view. And then he turned away and never spoke to me again Uh, because I don't think he could put me in a box and without me being in a box, he didn't know if he could talk to me. And and that really bothered me that the division was so, so strong that a young man couldn't carry on a conversation with me. It really, really got to me. And then a little while later I was talking to a neighbor and, she had different positions on what was going on in the world than I did. And, and I was talking about an issue. And I remember saying I was one of those, I'm, I'm just one of those millions in the middle who believe whatever the topic was. And she said, I am too. And so 
I went out and bought a domain back then called Millions in the Middle, knowing that somehow I was going to use it at some point. Mm -hmm. And now is the time when I was ready to use it. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I finally decided to accept that mission in my life, you know, to focus on that. Right. But I couldn't figure out how to do it because mm -hmm. it felt too, like I had to be too much of a smart person. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. about political issues and I needed to have real ideas, but I'm not that kind of person. I'm just, <laughs> I'm not, you know, that's somebody else's job to do the deep dive into right. the issues and to present what works and what doesn't work. But so I had to step back and say, well, what am I really good at? You know, not what do I suck at? Cause it took me, I was trying to start millions in the middle for two or three years and I could not get it off the ground. But that, at that point I realized that I also had another domain name that I bought. Um, about the same time called what's really possible. And I, oh, I could talk about what's possible and I could get people engaged and working toward what's possible. Right. So once I made that mental shift mm -hmm. to do that, it was like, Oh, my job is to inspire people to take action. You know, everybody out there, if we're part of this country, we have a role to play. And if you're mad at something and, and not talking to people because they're different from you, we can't do anything. We have to learn to have conversations together so we can work together. We need to trust people. Um, we all need to take a project that is something that we care about and use our volunteer time or our regular time to tackle some of these issues facing our local communities first, and then certainly mm -hmm. our our country and, and global issues as well. But we need everybody. We can't just keep pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing. I don't know where it's going. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, but that's, I, I think that's great to just get started. And sometimes it goes in a whole different direction than you expect. I mean, oh, yeah. and I love how you saw that there was resistance around the one idea because it was just maybe needed a little bit of a reframe. And then once you got the different, you know, the different mission, the different, uh, perspective on that, then you were able to get in the flow and get it launched. So that's, that's really cool. That's, yeah. Uh, and I'm real excited because once I knew that I could go under the what's really possible idea concept, it just flowed, you know, it was mm -hmm. just like, whoa, you know, let's get mm -hmm. going. I hired a website company to work with me and, mm -hmm. and help me create what I wanted to create and, and mm -hmm. uh, then it started to be fun. And now, um, now it's it's going. It, you know, I've, I've put out three or four yeah. newsletters so far. I'm bringing my people with me that have read me over the over the years, and, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully be expanding the number of people who um, are focused on what's really possible, not what we yeah. do. Because most of us agree on so many things. Right. That's so true. Talking. Yeah. So yeah. true. Yeah, that's so great, and I I love that you are you know got that launched and everything like that and. One of the things you had kind of talked about and one of the questions I ask people as, you know, as you're launching something new, you know, and you mentioned this in, uh, you know, in our discussion a little bit about the importance of kind of having the funding to launch something new. And so where does that come into play? Like, how did you figure out, you know, you had, you paid for someone to do design the website and what's your process for figuring out that funding and making sure that you've got kind of the means to keep this going and things like that? Well, that's, that's kind of a dual edge question because I'm in a position right now where I've had, you know, a good run. And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm self-financing and I'm doing it, you know, on my own right now. I'm right. pulling it out of my own bank account to get this right. thing started. Um, right. Because I don't want to, I, I just need to own it right now. I need to own it from every, you know, every ounce of my body needs to be putting herself into that role. Um, in the past, like when I launched Jill Conrath and some of the initiatives, I worked with people and I would barter, you know, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. things. I can help this, you with this, and you can help, you know, with that. Um, the other thing I've done consistently is if I look through all my, you know, last from the last um, 20 years of my life, starting jillconrath.com and, and then starting where I am right now. I do get groups of people together that are become support groups and can help me with different things. And, and if 
vice versa, and I can help them. I've formed a number of groups, which helps people spread the word and um, and has created revenue opportunities for other people too. So I, I, you know, there's many things that I've done, and and I, you know, I've learned how to get sponsors. I know how to get sponsors because I got sponsors with 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 my sales website, mm-hmm. and I got repeated sponsors, and it was a very profitable business. Plus, it was also, you know, I was speaking and and doing some training and product launch and consulting and stuff like that. But now uh, I'll be doing something in the future because usually I can't not do it. But I'm, again, I'm self-funding this project because it means a lot to me and I don't want it to be corrupted by a sponsor's perspective Mm -hmm. right now of what I'm doing. And I don't, I mean, I'm not trying to make money doing this right now. This is more my pro bono part of my life to do something that I, I really feel important about. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I love that because I think, you know, it is, it, that's another advantage I think we have as late starters is we're a little more liquid than we were when we were 20, you know, <laughs> like, little. <laughs> Come on, I was making $8,000 a year at that point in my career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it makes it kind of fun that you can you know, because I remember I designed my own first website and it was terrible. And it, it like I there was many late nights of me crying, wondering how to work WordPress, you know. And <laughs> yeah. So it's nice that you get to hire things. And I have. Hire, and, and I've yeah. people because in, they believe in my cause. Uh, they, you know, they are they believe, because this is a cause that I'm going mm-hmm. after. They've been right. in a sense, they've been sponsors because they haven't been charging me their full rate. And mm-hmm. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Yeah, because yeah. this is this is my passion project, and I'm hoping to make a dent in this world to solve some of these problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the things that um, you had also mentioned that I think is really important is just like, and you talked about was just gathering those groups of people and and kind of connecting with those relationships. So talk a little bit about how relationships have helped uh, you launch multiple businesses at this point, okay. you know, well, I can saying. tell you, yeah, let me, let me take you back to um, when I had just kind of started out with Jill Conrad being, being uh-huh. me, um, in my own website and, and everything. Um, I, I had come from a background of consulting and product launch and I was on a board for a library and, and I got the idea cause it was a business library. I got the idea that we could put on a we, meaning me and some other people I would, you know, pull together, could put on a new product launch um, session and mm-hmm. promote it in the Twin Cities area, Minneapolis, St. Paul area. And so I pulled together about five or seven people. One of them was a website developer. One of them was a marketing specialist. And another one, um, uh, it was, he, he had a company that helped people get appointments. And I mean, there were a bunch of us that came together and we put on an event and each one of us Uh, shared it with our own databases and we publicized it in whatever way we want. We had like 150, 200 people there at this local event with all these experts speaking and, and talking about launching a new product from this perspective and this perspective. And every one of us got business out of it from somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And then I started another group with, again, I'm in sales at this point with other people who were in sales. One, um, and this is a group of women. One woman was in, you know, marketing and helped people get ready. Another one did PR. Another one worked with sales leaders. Another one worked with small uh, company CEOs. And we had these group and we get together once a month and we would brainstorm and what we were doing and we would share clients, you know, because we were in related businesses. Right. right. And so it made sense for all of us. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's so smart because then you're doing it together and you're accountable to each other and you're, you know, I I love that. That's always great. Do it, do it, do things in a group and things happen. Things happen, (laughs) yeah. And the other thing I did in probably 2008, 2009 is I started, um, again, because I was on this women in sales need other role models, I decided to put on an event for four women in sales featuring only women sales experts who I'd be known around the country, I put it on in Minneapolis. We had about 150 people there nice. and I had other women sales experts in talking about their area of expertise. Uh-huh. And 
uh, the group is still together, by the way. It's now called Women's Sales Pros. I'm no longer the leader of it because I'm better at starting things than keeping things going. And Lori Rich yeah. is wonderful at keeping groups together. But we've got women sales experts from all around the world that yeah. are now part of this group. And we share business. That's so great. somebody will say, you know, write to me, you know, I, we'd love to have you talk. Um, we're looking at, for negotiation expertise. You know, can you do, talk mm -hmm. on negotiation? Well, I suck at negotiation, you know? So I said, well, you should be talking to this person there, you know, and, and, and I would, yeah. I constantly refer people to others in my group. So it's, it's the forming of a group of colleagues. Yeah. Related industries that can really make a difference. Yeah. And that's so important when, you know, as I think as an entrepreneur, when you're kind of running your own thing and, you know, not, you're not part of a office or a big, you know, you, yes. so having you're so alone person, there, yeah. you're so alone if you're an entrepreneur so often. Yeah. And it's just so important to have somebody you can call up and at 10 or 10 o'clock in the morning, you have coffee with, you know? Yeah. 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 For sure. You know, or have yeah. a Zoom meeting, but just to have a human being to touch and talk to, you know? But, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about, tell, tell us a little bit about how, um, where fear and overwhelm have, have shown up for you in some of the ventures that you've done. I know you were telling a, a great story before we, before we started, but I want to just talk about that even in general and how that has played a part and how you've gotten through it and gotten past it. Um, okay. I'll start out with a, a, a career ending opportunity. <laughs> Going into sales, and um, when I first went into sales, I I really studied sales hard, and and I remember reading a book one weekend, and it said that if you're dealing with the administrative assistant, you're at the wrong level. Mm -hmm. You should be calling on the the boss. And mm -hmm. so I had just been on a call earlier that week. It was a weekend, but you know the week before I'd been on a call where um, I was dealing with the administrative assistant. And I, and I remember saying to myself, oh, my God, I really screwed up. You know, I'm working with the wrong person. So on Monday, I got on the phone and I contacted the president of this smaller company and told him, I understand you're making a copy your decision. I'd love to come in and talk with you about it. And he said, OK. And so I went back the following, you know, Wednesday or something to meet with the president of the company. Of course, the person who came down to bring me to his office was the administrative assistant that I had just you know, made a loop around. And she said to me, Jill, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'm here to see your boss, the president. And she said, and she leans into me, literally points her finger in my face and said, I told you I was making the decision. And, and, and she starts swearing at me and I'm in the lobby and I faint dead away on the floor. Now I got <laughs> sales for a few months at this point. Okay. And I'm on the floor and I come to and all these people are around me <laughs> and she's kneeling down and she's saying, are you okay? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. As I get up to my knees and, you know, sit down there. And she said, don't you ever come back to this office again? And so I sat there for a little while and finally left in tears and I got to my car and I started sobbing. I mean, I had just left a cushy teaching job, which I hated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and gone into um, sales, which I never wanted to be in sales. Yeah. But there I am. And I'm thinking Xerox is going to fire me, you know, <laughs> for this thing. And I find, and I remember being there and just literally stopping to think and say, okay, Jill, you really, really screwed up here. You really screwed up. Um, you failed. And then at some level, something happened and, and I switched what I was doing. And I went, no, no, no. Something screamed in my brain. No, no, no. You've just had a valuable learning experience. Yes, you goofed. You had a valuable learning experience. What did you learn? Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I, I thought about it and I said, well, I, I went around her, you know, I, I could have invited her to bring me in, but I, it took me a while to, you know, get it all. All I knew is what I did was wrong and I wouldn't repeat it. And it was a valuable learning experience. And I have to tell you, for the rest of my career, that one incident saved me a gazillion times because I have made a lot of mistakes. I really have. And I think all of us do. 
Um, mm-hmm. Some of them are costly and some of them mm-hmm. are just stupid, you know, but um, I, I'm really good at reframing things mm-hmm. and to take a look at this and here's, here's what happened. And I, I'm a failure. I'm over the hill. No, no, I'm not a failure. I, I just had a valuable learning experience. And what really matters is that I take the learning out of it mm-hmm. so that I can apply it going forward. So that's. Yeah. Situations. <laughs> just one. Uh, uh, I I love that. That's just such a great lesson. The reframe, because it is this voice in our head, but that yeah. is just an a, Amazing story. You fainted, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Did I? And I had a short skirt on and I laid on the <laughs> ground in a very inappropriate position until I came to. Yeah. One of my favorite memories. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. That's yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I love it. And um, yeah, just a great, it's so important to be able to, you know, have that, try and keep remembering that reframe skill. Because it is just all stories we tell ourselves, and it's all about what lesson that we're going to learn from it. Right. Yeah. So right. that is awesome. That is awesome. Well, I uh, enjoyed talking to you so much, and uh, but our our time's coming to a close. And what I love to always ask my guests is a favorite quote or inspirational saying that inspires you and keeps you going. Okay. The first one I had up, I got it up. I'm going to tell you two. I have to. Okay, that's great. When I say had it up, I had it pinned to my wall for years. Mm-hmm. Never say never. Never say never. You know, it's like, no, I can never do that. No, never say never. You know, I just mm-hmm. haven't figured it out yet. That was the mm-hmm. big thing. And then the one I have up on my wall today, and I have it here, but you can't read it. it says, speak your mind, even if your voice shakes. Mm-hmm. So your mind even if your voice shakes by maggie kuhn i don't even know who she is but as i go forward today with what i'm doing dealing with political issues and left and right and red and green and blue and all these colors that are out there it's like i'm going to speak my mind even if my voice shakes i'm i'm going to be the reason i'm going to be the voice of calm you know come on Mm. you guys we can do this we have to use common sense we can come together but i have to speak and yeah. it scares the living daylights out of me to do that. It really does. Mm-hmm. People don't think that, but it does scare me. Yeah. Well, that's that's amazing. I think the best things are scary things. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and it just is good to push past that. And, you know, when you're not seeing the person who's leading that, you've taken charge in both women in sales and now you know, getting into what's really possible with uh, bringing, bringing community together. So I love that. Thank you. So I will have all the links in the show notes here. What's really possible.com. Where else can people connect with you and find, find you? Um, LinkedIn. You can follow me on LinkedIn. That's why I've got a lot of followers on LinkedIn and I'll be starting to publish more on LinkedIn too. Okay. Online, but I would like to say that if they visit my website, it says, join me. It says, join me. When you join me, you get my newsletter <laughs> and you join me on this mission to make a world, you know, come together and get some stuff done that the majority of us agree on. So I'm asking people yeah. to join me on this adventure. That's great. Love it. Well, Jill, thank you so much for your time and sharing your your inspiration with my our listeners here. And uh, we, I just wish you well on this new venture of yours. Thank you so much. Hope that was helpful and make sure you grab the free guide, Top Tools for Late Starters on the website at latestartersclub.com. And let's turn dreaming into doing.